Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. You know that that's the God's glory. Because he is worthy to be praised. Amen. 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 God is a wonderful God. There is no God like our God. And we magnify him on this morning. Amen. At this time, we're going to receive. But before we go into our praise and worship, amen, we'd like to, by way of announcement to let you know that you can join us on this afternoon at 5 p.m., amen, for our Zoom session. And the information should be right there on our Facebook page for you. All right, those of you that would like to join in with us, and it will be our missionary service this afternoon, 5 p.m., all right, all right. The missionary department will be in charge. At this time, we're going to receive, amen, our praise and worship team. Come on and let's glorify God along with them. Hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on and worship him on this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Get your mindset to give him glory and worship. Hallelujah. In him do I live, move, and have my being. In him do I live, move, and have my being. In him do I live, move, and have my being. In him do I live, move, and have my being. Because I'm nothing without you. I'm nothing. Lord, I'm nothing without you. I'm nothing without you. Said I'm nothing without you. I'm nothing without you. Lord, I'm nothing without you. I'm nothing without you. In him do I live, move, and have my being. In him do I live. Move and have my being. In him do I live, move and have my being. In him do I live, move and have my being. Because I'm nothing without you. I'm nothing without you. I'm nothing without you. I'm nothing without you. Lord, I'm nothing without you. I'm nothing without you. Said I'm nothing without you. I'm nothing without you. So breathe through me. Yes, And Let 
let your glory reign. Let your glory reign. In me. In me. Hallelujah. I'm nothing without you, Lord. Lord, I am nothing without you. Hallelujah. We praise the Lord all today. Amen. For that song from our praise and worship team. Amen. Get your Bibles if you can. Get your Bibles. Get your Bibles. Amen. Hallelujah. Get your Bibles. Amen. Turn with us to the book of Leviticus. Leviticus, the 22nd chapter. Hallelujah. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we come before you. We want to say thank you. We give you glory, honor, and praise. We magnify your holy name. We ask that you will have your way, O oh God, in this place and over the airways. Uh, magnify yourself. Use this vessel according to your perfect will. Uh, o oh God, cause those that have ears to hear what thus saith the Lord on this morning. Uh, give them the ears to hear, a heart to receive, and a mind to be obedient unto the word of God. We thank you for victory over that adversary right now. We plead the blood of Jesus against him. Uh, oh God, we ask you, Lord, to loose the captives and let them go free. Uh, heal, oh God, heal the blinded eyes, oh God. Heal the deaf ears. Uh, oh God, move upon the bodies that are sick and diseased. Uh, bring forth for healing now in the mighty and powerful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Uh, from the crown of their head to the sole of their feet, uh, we glorify you for it now. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. And amen again. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. The 22nd chapter of the book of Leviticus. Leviticus, the 27th, 22nd chapter. Leviticus, the 22nd chapter. Amen. When I asked the Lord, amen, what would you have me to say to your people? to the people and he carried me to this passage of scripture and as I began to read and uh, the scripture I actually started thinking in my mind uh, uh, as to why he was carrying me to the scripture but of course the spirit began to speak and to give me understanding as to why the Lord carried me to this particular scripture. The book of Leviticus, the 22nd chapter, beginning at verse 17. Amen. I am going to go to several passages of scripture, so hang in there with me. If you get tired of reading, I will continue on, but it is not a whole lot of reading. Yeah. Leviticus, the 22nd chapter, beginning at verse 17, 17 to 25. And the Bible said, And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto Aaron and to his sons, and unto all the children of Israel, and say unto them, Whatsoever he be, whoso, whatsoever he be of the house of Israel, or of the stranger in Israel, that will offer his oblation for all his vows, yes. and for all his free will offerings, which they will offer unto the Lord for a burnt offering. Ye shall offer at your own will yes. a male without blemish of the bees, of the sheep, or of the goats. But whatsoever hath a blemish, that shall ye not offer, for it shall not be acceptable for you, my God. Yes. And whosoever offereth a sacrifice of peace offerings unto the Lord to accomplish his vow, or a free will offering in beeves or sheep, it shall be perfect to be accepted. There shall be no blemish therein. Blind or broken or maimed or have a wing or scurvy or scabbed, ye shall not offer these unto the Lord. Yes. Nor make an offering by fire of them upon the altar unto the Lord. Either a bullock or a ram that hath anything superfluous or lacking in its parts, that mayest thou offer for a free will of offering. But for a vow it shall not be accepted. Ye shall not offer unto the Lord that which is bruised or crushed or broken or cut. Neither shall ye make any 
offering thereof in your land. Neither from a stranger's hand shall ye offer the bread of your God of any of these, because their corruption is in them and blemishes be in them. They shall not be accepted for you. Amen. Let's go to the book of Romans, the 12th chapter. Romans, the 12th chapter. It is a well-known scripture to some, but maybe not to all. Amen. Romans, the 12th chapter. I'm going to read two verses there. The Bible says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, yes. holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed, by the renewing of your mind. That ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Uh, go with me to the book of Hebrews really quickly, if you will. The book of Hebrews. Hebrews, the 10th chapter. Hebrews the 10th chapter verses 1 through 6. The Bible says, for the law having a shadow of good things to come and not the very image of the things can never with the, those sacrifices which they offer year by year continually make the comer thereunto perfect. For then would they not have ceased to be offered because that the worshippers once purged should have had no more conscience of sins. But in those sacrifices there is a remembrance again made of sin every year. Yeah. For it is not possible that the blood of bulls and of goats should take away sins. Wherefore when he cometh into the world he saith, Sacrifice and offering thou wouldest not. But a body hast thou prepared me. And burnt offerings and sacrifice for sin thou hast had no pleasure. Amen. I'd like to jump back over, if you would, to the book of Leviticus. The book of Leviticus, the 22nd chapter. And I'd like to read verses 20 and 21 again in your hearing. But whatsoever has a blemish, that shall ye not offer, for it shall not be acceptable to you, for you. For, let me read that again. But whatsoever has a blemish, that shall ye not offer, for it shall not be acceptable for you. And whatsoever offereth, and whosoever offereth a sacrifice of peace offerings unto the Lord to accomplish his vow, or a free will offering in beeves or sheep, it shall be perfect to be accepted. There shall be no blemish therein. Ah. I like to use for a topic on this morning give God your best. Amen. Yes. Amen. Give God your best. Amen. Give God your best. Now, I looked up the word best, and best simply means this that which is the most excellent, outstanding, or desirable. Best, that which is the most excellent, outstanding, or desirable. Again, give God your best. Give God that which is most excellent, outstanding, 
or desirable. Mm -hmm. Give God your best. Now, the reason, or one of the reasons I would say that we can proclaim and say, give God your best, is because God gave his best for us. Ah, uh, he didn't just give anything, but he gave his best. Yes. One of the things that I love about God is this. We do not serve a God, a man that does not abide by his own word. Amen. Right. Now, understandably so, he can change whatever he wants to change, when he wants to change it, and of course how he yes. wants to change it. Right. But we serve a God that abides by his word. Yes. Oh, I, I, I love it when people abide by what they say. If they want me to do it, then I'm looking for them to do it. Yes. Uh, it bothers me when somebody tells me to do something and they won't even do it themselves. Yes. But we serve a God that when he tells you to do something, uh, he also backs it up by doing the very thing uh, that he asked or told you to do. Amen. And so I see in the scriptures that God himself uh, tells us that he doesn't want us to give him any type of thing, but he is specific as to how he wants it to be. And uh, he wants it to be without a blemish in it. He does not want it to be messed up. Uh, he does not want it to be scarred up. He does not want it to be marred. He does not want uh, it to be crushed. He does not want uh, it to be bruised. He does not want it to be cut. Yes. Now that was under the Old Testament. When they were offering up sacrifices of bullocks and heifers and dogs and bees and sheep and things of the such, God specified what was not acceptable unto him. So when God decided that he would give Jesus as a ransom for our sin, oh, he sent Jesus without a spot in him. Yes. He was holy. He was pure. He was righteous. Uh, my God. Uh, oh, my Lord. It was God wrapped uh, up in humanity. Yes. When God gave his son, uh, he gave his best uh, because it was him uh, wrapped up uh, in flesh. Yes. You can't get no better than that. Yes. God gave his best for you and for me. Yes. And how do we know that Jesus was God's best? Well, uh, let's examine uh, his life. See, in the Old Testament, they would bring the sacrifices to the priest. That the priest had to do an examination uh, on the sacrifice to make sure uh, that the sacrifice was accepted unto God. Yeah. And if they found anything wrong with the sacrifice, uh, it could not be used. Amen. Amen. But Jesus, uh, amen, he came uh, in the form of a man. Uh, amen. He came for sin uh, and he condemned sin uh, in the flesh. Uh, the Bible tells us that he was tempted uh, in Point, huh? Yet huh? he was without sin. Huh? This was an examination. Huh? Oh my God. Huh? When he got in the wilderness huh? for 40 days and 40 nights, huh? the Bible said he fasted. Huh? Afterward, he was in hunger. Huh? And the tempter came. Huh? Oh my Lord. Huh? My, 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 my. Huh? Let's talk about the tempter uh, or being tempted. Huh? Temper. Huh? My God, you're trying. Huh? Amen. The devil huh? began to look for weak spots huh? when you're being tempted. Huh? He's looking for a weak area. Huh? Now they talk about how they made swords. Huh? Amen. And how huh? they would melt the steel. Huh? How they would fashion the sword. Huh? How they would take the sword. Huh? And they would baptize it. Huh? They would put it in the water. Huh? They were freezing now. Uh, amen. And they look at it now. Uh, they put it in the fire. Uh, take it out. Uh, baptize it. Uh, look for spots. Uh, if there were any spots, uh, had to go back in the fire. 
and with power, with great power, amen, to do the will of the Lord. Huh. What are you saying? Huh. What I'm saying to you huh, is that God, huh, he put himself on trial. Huh. Lord, have mercy. Huh. See, we all huh, must go through trial. Huh. And because Jesus huh, had flesh, huh, he had to be tried. Huh. He had to be proven huh, that he will withstand huh, everything the devil huh, would throw to him. Huh, because the devil, huh, he threw some things huh, at Adam and Eve huh, in the midst of the garden. Huh, and they failed. Huh. But this man, huh, the second Adam, huh, he was called huh, to prove that it could be done. Hallelujah. My God. And so he was spotless. Yes. He was spotless. He was pure. He remained righteous throughout all of his life. He even said, I always do the things that please my father. Amen. Always. There is no spot in me. And before he left, he left this on record that the prince of this world cometh. And he has nothing in me. In other words, I have not been contaminated. I am ready to be offered up. Because God would only accept a spotless lamb. Yes. Give God your best. Jesus was our perfect example in giving God his best. He gave God everything that he had. I didn't say it was easy, but he did it. And I can't tell you that it's going to be easy, huh? but you can do it. Huh? Give God huh, your best. Huh? Now, let me just look back here a little bit here. Huh? When I talk about giving God your best, huh? and I was reminded again about our Savior and his pureness and his holiness and his righteousness. Huh? But not only was I uh, reminded about him. Huh? I was reminded huh, how when huh, uh, Cain and Abel, huh, amen, when they were together. Huh? Now the Bible tells me that there was a time huh, that both of them offered up sacrifices huh, unto God. Yeah. Huh? Amen. Cain, huh? amen, which was a timber of the ground. Huh? Amen. He brought the ground, huh? And it said Abel, huh? Amen. He was like a herdsman, huh? And he brought God, huh? Of that, huh? And the Bible tell me, huh? That God had respect, huh? Up to Abel's offering, huh? Hey, Lord, huh? But Cain got upset, huh? Because God, huh? Didn't accept his offering, huh? But I heard God, huh? Talk to Cain, huh? And said, if thou do well, huh? Won't you be accepted, huh? That lets us know, huh? That he didn't give God his best, huh? But had he done it the right way, huh? God would have accepted it, huh? You can't give God, huh? What you want to give him, huh? And expect him to take it, huh? You got to give God, huh? I say you got to give God, huh? I say give God, huh? Give God your best. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Glory. Stop yeah. shortchanging him. Yeah. My God, and then the scripture said, amen, they know what I believe in the book of Hebrews also, not the passage that I read, amen, about the sixth chapter, I'm not mistaken, then the Bible tells us that Cain offered up a more excellent sacrifice, oh Lord, oh God, he offered up a more excellent sacrifice than what his brother offered, huh? Now I said what best meant, huh? It meant with that which is the most excellent, huh? Lord, have mercy, huh? We gotta stop playing games, huh? We gotta get it straight, huh? We gotta get it in line, huh? We gotta get it in order, huh? And give God the best, huh? And 
Bashadura Bashekandia Basa. I said he gave his best. He gave his best. He gave his best. He sent Jesus with healing. He sent Jesus with deliverance. He sent Jesus with saving power. He sent Jesus to do what nobody else could. He sent Jesus to keep us out of hell. Oh, he got the keys to death, hell, and the grave. He sent Jesus, which was his best. My God, somebody got to be willing. Somebody got to be willing. Yeah. I said, you got to be willing to do it. You got to be willing to do it. Because Jesus did it for us. Huh. I said he did it for us. Huh. Now, as I began huh, to go on, huh, amen, huh, knowing that the Lord died for our sins, huh, he hung on Calvary's cross, huh, amen, and while he was there, huh, dying on the cross, huh, there was that was saying beside him, ha, that said, Lord, ha, remember me ha, when you come and do your kingdom, ha, my God. Ha. And Jesus came ha, to seek and to save ha, that which was lost ha, and even down on the cross, ha, being in agony. Ha, oh, ha, he wanted to give God ha, all he had, ha, give God his best, ha, knowing ha, in the scriptures, ha, he said, Lord, ha, I come. In the volume ha, of the book, ha, to do I will, ha, oh God, ha, yeah, ha, it was the body ha, that God ha, had given him ha, to give his best sin, ha, to do his best sin, ha, to live his best sin, ha, to walk his best sin. Ha, he gave, ha, I said he gave, ha, he gave, ha, he gave God ha, his best. The Bible said that he was obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Yes. And that because he gave God his best, that God has given him a name above every name, that at the name of Jesus, yes. every knee should bow and every tongue yes. should confess. Yes. My God, ha, and that's because he gave God his best, ha. See, if you want to give God, ha, if you give God your best, ha, God will also make a name for you, ha. What you talking about, pastor, ha, let's go on back, ha, to when God, ha, went to where Abram was, ha. He got Abram, ha, he said, Abram, ha, I want you to leave your kinfolk, ha, and go to a place, ha, that I'm going to show you, ha. Abraham, Abram, ha, at that time, ha, God is something together, ha, got his family together, ha, and launched out, ha, on the word of God, ha, hey, ha, the word, ha, he believed God, ha, oh yes he did, ha, he slept not, ha, the promise of the God, ha, he moved, ha, in faith, ha, toward God, ha, and it was his faith, ha, I said it was his faith, ha, that justified him, ha, with the Lord, ha, oh, ha, because he believed God, ha, oh yes he did, ha, and God told him, ha, I am, ha, gonna make your name great, ha, you don't have to make your own name great, ha, if you give God, ha, your best, ha, not because, ha, you want a great name, ha, but because, ha, you know, ha, he deserves it, ha, I said he deserves it, ha, I said he deserves it, ha, oh, ha, I said God, ha, he deserves, ha, your best. Yes. Yes. Hey. I said he deserved the best. Somebody need to give God your best. Stop throwing junk at God. Huh? Stop throwing trash at God. Huh? Stop throwing half-hearted stuff at God. Huh? He don't want half-hearted. Huh? He wants your whole heart. Huh? He said, love me with all your heart. Huh? All your soul. Huh? All your mind. Huh? And all your strength. Huh? And when you love me like that, huh? you're going to give it your all. Huh? You're going to do it with all the sin. Huh? Oh! Huh? You're going to rejoice huh? in the God. Huh? In the rock huh? of your salvation. Huh? You're going to bless the Lord. Huh? Like he told you. Huh? Bless the Lord. Huh? Oh, my soul. Huh? And the oh, Bless. That's 
giving God your best. Do you hear what I'm saying? That's when you're giving God your best. Mm. On yesterday, we went to a man, Lady Brockington's funeral. Amen. And they had some wonderful words to say about her. And, you know, some things that was in the obituary that I didn't even know. I mean, she gave God her best. I'm trying to tell you that woman worked, 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 worked. She did so much work for the Lord and for the kingdom of God. It was, it'll make you stand in awe. Like, how could one woman do it all? Amen. But that woman did so much. She gave God her best. Do you hear what I'm saying? Right now, she's up in Zion. Amen. She's up there in Zion along with the Lord. Amen. She already paid her price. Amen. Like Paul said. Amen. When it was time for him to go, he said he finished his course. He had kept the faith. And he was ready. What to be offered? Yeah. Yeah. Now, don't nobody holler it out, but are you ready to be offered? See, see, are you ready to be offered? Well, see, I want you to tell him this is this 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 is not just when you close your eyes. Yes, we're going to be offered then, but we're being offered every day. Yes. The Bible said, present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable. Woo. Yeah. See, we're not giving God what's acceptable. And then the Bible declares to us that when the Lord come back, he's coming back for a church without what? A spot, a wrinkle, a blemish, or any such thing. Yes. Help me, please. And I think sin puts spots and blemishes all over you, God. Yes. So it's no way to give God your best if you're living in sin. It's no way to give God your best huh? when you're letting the devil be your master. Huh? You can't tell me you're giving God your best huh? and you ain't living a righteous life. Huh? And you're not living a godly life. Huh? And you're not taking off what you need to take off huh? and putting on what you need to put on. Huh? Oh, lay aside huh? every weight in the sin huh? that do it so evilly huh? beset you. Huh? But put ye on huh? the Lord huh? Jesus Christ huh? and his righteousness. Huh? Wrap yourself up. Give God your best. Yes. You know how sometimes certain places we want to go, we're not going to go there dressed any kind of way. Mm -hmm. Not going to go there dressed any kind of way. You're going to put on your best. Yes. You're going to put on your best suit. You're going to put on your best undergarments. Amen. You're going to put on your, and you know you're going to wash. I hope you do that anyway. Amen. You're going to make sure you're nice and clean and smell good. Amen. You're going to put on your best outfit and make sure you look real good in it. You don't want no spots in it. You don't want no wrinkles, you know. And that's you because you're going to meet some people. Yes. Uh -huh. yes. How dare us to bring ourselves before the Lord. Yeah. Oh, my God. Amen. If all of those that said the Lord said come as y'all. Yes, but he didn't say stay as you are. Coming as you are is okay, but he's going to give you something to wear to fix you up. Put it on. Yes. You can't stay the way you are. You got to change. Yes. Yes. If you don't change, you can't give God your best. Yes. How is it that we think we're going to ride around and sin? Talk about the blood cover, the blood cover, the blood cover. The blood came so that he can cleanse us from all sin. But take away the sin, not for us to stay in it. Yes. Yes. Jesus didn't come so we can stay in our sins. There would be no need. He came to save us from yes. our sins. To bring us up out of the sin. We were dying in our sins. Sin bringeth forth death. You can't live if you're going to stay in your sins. You can't give God the best that you can be if you stay in your sins. Because sin puts spots, puts weaknesses. It dampens your life. It pulls you down. Instead of building you up, get out of the sin. And if somebody say, I don't know how to get out of sin, if you've never been brought out of sin, then Jesus is your way out. Jesus is your way out. He died to bring you out. He wants to bring you out. And once he brings you out, he wants to keep you out. But if you went back in, he'll bring you out again. But don't keep playing games. The Bible says, what shall we say? Huh? Shall we continue in sin huh? that grace may abound? Huh? God forbid. Huh? How shall we huh? that are dead to sin huh? live any longer? Huh? That in, huh? Get out of sin huh? and give God huh? your best. Get out 
stay out. Yes. It's time out for all this watered down stuff. Ain't nobody right. Ain't nobody say, ain't no, you know we all sin. We all don't sin. Speak for yourself. Amen. Speak for yourself. Stop trying to put everybody in your bed with you because you know you ain't doing what God told you to do when he gave us the power to be able to do it. Yes. My God. We got too much power of the Holy Ghost down on the inside to keep walking crooked and getting into this and getting into that over and over and over and over when God has wanted us to give him our best. We got to do our best. We got to do our best. And I didn't say you were going to struggle with some things. I didn't say you're never going to fall. But get up. Don't keep falling in the same thing. Yes, yes. yes. Got to give them your best. Got to give them your best. I, you, we all want to look good before God each and every day. See, you got to put on your best every day. And that's Jesus. See, and if, I, if I put on the Lord Jesus Christ, so that means I need to walk in him. I should be talking in him. I should be living in him. Whatever I do, I should be doing it in Jesus. The Bible said whatever you do in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus. Yes. And if you can't do it in the name of Jesus, then it means you shouldn't be doing it. Yes. Uh, woo. I know our flesh want to have its way. But you got to tell your flesh you won't have to sit down. You're going to have to get out of here because i got to do the will of God. i got to give God my best. Huh? Amen. i got to fix myself up for the Lord. Huh? Amen. i got to fix myself up for my groom. Huh? Amen. Because he's on his way back. Huh? Amen. The church is the bride of Christ. Huh? Amen. And we got to get prepared. Huh? And we got to get adorned. Huh? Amen. To meet our Savior huh? in the middle of the air. Because huh? there will be, huh? there will be huh? a marriage huh? up in heaven, ha, my God, ha, so it's time to fix up, ha, you know how it is, ha, my sisters that are married, ha, or had been married, ha, you know how we went out, ha, how we started looking for our garments, ha, how we start placing this, that, and the other, ha, getting everything right, ha, making sure the dress fit right, ha, amen, getting your little tiara, ha, amen, looking in the mirror, ha, how many dresses you went through, ha, till you got to the one, ha, that looked the way you wanted it to look, ha, cause you wanted to look good, ha, for that group that was going to be standing out at the front of that altar, huh? or wherever you went, huh? you wanted to look good, huh? you wanted to be approving huh? unto that groom, huh? well it's time, huh? I said it's time huh? for us to dress up, huh? this is a dress up room, huh? right here on this earth, huh? now that we've been empowered huh? with the spirit of God, huh? he want to dress us up, huh? oh! But sometimes now people don't want to go in the dressing room, huh? And they don't want to take the right garments, huh? That God has given them, huh? You can't give God, huh? The ones you want to wear, huh? But He's already, huh? Instruct them now, the garments, huh? For us to put on, huh? That's going to be acceptable, huh? You got to get it right, huh? You got to get it right, huh? You got to put it on, huh? Put it on! And keep it on, huh? Until Jesus now crack that sky, huh? You can't take it off, huh? You can't take it off, now. Put it on, take it off, put it on, take it off, put it on, take it off, put it on, take it off. No, leave it on! Because yes. he hasn't come back for us yet. He's coming, but he hasn't come yet. Until he get here, huh? You want to make sure, huh? That whatever that trouble sound, huh? Oh my God, huh? And the dead in Christ rise, huh? And we that alive and remain, huh? Be caught up together to meet the Lord in the middle of the air, huh? But I come to tell you, huh? If you're not ready, huh? If you don't have on the right garments, huh? If you're not prepared, huh? If you haven't been giving God your best, huh? You're going to be left behind, huh? I say you're going to be left behind, huh? And the rest of us, huh? Are going in, huh? Oh, huh? We're going to go on in, huh? To the wedding. Ha, to the marriage ha, of the Lamb Supper, ha. we go go on in ha, without you, ha. but you got time ha, to get it right, ha. you got time ha, to change your clothes, ha. you got time ha, to repent of your sins ha, and give God ha, the best. Glory, yes. My God, my time. I can't say how much time you got. I don't know how much time you have left, but whatever time you have remaining, you ought to make up in your mind, Lord, I'm going to give you my best. 
and probably just about everybody that's under the sound of my voice, including myself, because when I heard this message, when I heard this message that the Lord was speaking and all, and I began to think on this message, amen, you got to go back and repent your own self. Yeah. And say, Lord, have mercy, Lord, I'm sorry. Amen, because there are some areas in your life that you know you ain't give God your best at all times. Amen, but I want to give you my best. See, and that means in each and every thing. See, it's not just, every, just, uh, not just some things. It's not just spiritual things. It has to be natural things, too. Because all of this, all of this, all right, all of this is wrapped up in the Lord. Everything about us is wrapped up in the Lord. Paul said it's no more I, but it's the Christ that dwells therein. So whatever I do, whatever I say, all of me represents him. You got to understand, I am an attachment. I am a part of him. So I represent him. You know, it's just like in the Bible, when the Bible talks about the husband and the wife. Amen. And, and God, you know, he just began to really expand my mind even more on that. See, when the Lord talks about it in the word, we know what the word says. Amen. And we, not that we don't know what the word says. Amen. But when the Lord talks about the husband and the wife in the word. Amen. And he begins to talk to the husband, amen. And he says basically that they are not to deal bitterly with their wives, amen. At least their prayers be hindered, all right. But he also said, he also lets it be known that if you do things contrary to your wife, that you're really doing it to yourself, all right, because your wife is actually a part of you. The problem is, we don't think like we should, and so we don't think like we should. If the husband really thought as the wife as really being a part of him, just like your limb, I am not going to deliberately. Um, shut my hand in the door. I'm not going to do that. Mm -hmm. Why? Because it's going to hurt my hand. If it hurt my hand, it hurts me because my hand is a part of my body. See, we have to start thinking literal so we can really get a deeper understanding of what God wants us to understand. And because I am a part of the body of Christ, all right, I am a part of the body of Christ, so whatever I do is representing Christ. All right? It's representing Christ. Whatever I say, it represents Christ because I am a part of his body. So I cannot go and do anything that will not bring some type of effect upon his body. All right? Even if you did it by yourself. Even if you did it by yourself. Oh, I'm just doing this by myself. You know, and it's not going to affect, affect anyone. Of course it does. You're a part of the body. You have to remember, you're not just by yourself. You are a part of the body. And so, since God uh, says, since God wants the best from us, that means that we have to give our best in everything. Amen. Not just uh, spiritual things as we would consider it to be. But we have to give our best in everything. In the natural, in the spiritual. Whatever, whatever we do, we must give our best effort in it. Our best. All right? Our best. So we have room for improvement and growth. We have room for improvement and growth. All right? Because we want to excel. We want to make sure that we are giving God our best. Amen? So that's the target. The target is giving God your best. The target should not be to do better than someone else. No, your target is to give God your best. Your best. You can't give them God. You can't give him their best. They have to give God the best that is within them to give God. See, that way you don't have to be jealous of anybody because you're, you're trying to perfect what God has given unto you, whatever it is, whether it is natural, be it spiritual. You want to give God your best, all right? If it's an intelligence, you want to give God your best intelligence. Is there a higher place that you can go intellectually? Okay, let's give God our best. Whatever it is, most definitely spiritual. You know, there's higher heights and there are deeper depths. All right, and we go from grace to grace, from faith to faith. And that is how God takes us. So we have to move with the transition, or we will not be in the place where God will have us to be at the time He wants us to be there. All right, if God expects you to be at point C, uh, at point C by the 15th of this month, you should be at point C by the 15th of this month. All right? He didn't want you at point Z. If he wanted you at point Z, then he let you know. All right? He wants you at point C. He know what we can take. So if you're at point C by the 15th of this month, then that is 100%. That is your best that you could have possibly given God within that amount of time. All right? If you gave God what you could have given him in that amount of time, you're okay. 
Now somebody else, they may have been able to go to F. And God knew that they were qualified to be at F. So on the 15th, they should be at F. The Bible said that we ought not to compare ourselves to ourselves. Don't compare yourself with other people. All right? Because you're going to find yourself falling short a lot of times. Or you're going to find yourself trying to be lifted up in pride where there is no space for pride. All right? Because whatever you do, it is because the Lord has allowed you to accomplish it and God has helped you to there. Do it. All right? And whatever you have, God has given it unto you. So you can't look down on nobody. You can't look down on nobody because if you're looking down on somebody, if they're at 15, if, they, if they're at C, and you belong at F, all right? But you got to E. So you can see they only at C, but I'm at E, so I'm not that bad. God said, I don't accept what you have. You worse. No. They in the right place. They are giving me what I want from them at this point of time. So actually, they're doing better than me. Why? Because they're giving me their best, and you are not giving me your best. Jesus overlooked the treasury at one point in time in the Bible. And he watched the people as they came and they put the money in the treasury. You know, some was rich. You know, some had okay money or whatever. And they put it in there. And of course, the people that, you know, had a whole lot, they thinking, like, hey, you know, I'm a big shot. I did it. You know, I gave all this money. You know, I gave all this money. I put this money in this place. I'm helping this place to run. You know, I'm helping this all. You know, there. And Jesus looking, it was a woman that put one might. But the Bible said it was all she had. And Jesus made the comment that that woman put more in than everybody. Why? Because she gave God her best. And her best was all she had. Her best was all she had. It was one little mite. And I looked that up at one point. I think it was equivalent to like a half of a penny. But in God's eyesight, she gave more than a millionaires. She gave more than a millionaires. Because she gave God her best. God is looking for your best. And don't come telling me, oh, this is all I could give God. You know better. You know what you could have done better. You know what you could have done better. And don't tell me, I got the I can't help us. Why couldn't you help it if you got the power of God on the inside? What part are we not doing that we should be doing? Are we not praying? Are we not fasting? Are we not reading? Are we not listening to the word of God under the people we should be listening to the word of God under? Is that what happened to us? Because sometimes we need to simply go back and examine what took place. So we can really come to a full conclusion as to whether we could have given God more than what we have given unto him. It's time for us to give God our best. The time is winding up. Yeah. Yeah. He's not going to accept anything less. Yeah. Now, people may accept it. They may pat you on the back. Woo! You did a good job. And God is up there like, so you did? Because yes. you could have did better than that. Amen. And I know you could have. Yes. So what they consider to be good, I don't consider to be good at all. Don't judge yourself off of what other people are saying about you. Yes. You got to judge yourself over what God is saying about you. Because everybody can pat you on the back. That's right. And everybody could possibly be putting you into heaven when you know you're on your way to hell. Jesus. And that's going to be a sad story. Because can't nobody preach you into heaven. They can preach it like you're going there. But if God said you're not, you're not. That's right. And there's been a many people that tried to preach people in heaven, but those people went to hell. Because they didn't give God their best. They never even gave themselves over to God. See, that's, that's giving God your best. When you say, Lord, I surrender all. Yes. See, I'm going to come to you as I am. But I know you're not going to leave me as I am. So when you're trying to change me, I'm going to let you do the change in me. I'm going to let you transform my mind. I, I'm going to let you transform my heart. I, I'm going to ask you to take this stony heart. I, and I'm going to ask you, Lord, to break it up. I, and to follow ground. I, so that you can plant things in me. I, and so that you can bring forth fruit I, out of this vessel. I, I want to give you uh, the best uh, that I possibly can offer you. Oh, oh. Oh, yeah. Lord. I want to give you the best. When Jesus died on Calvary, mm. he gave God his best. Yes, yes. 
He gave his best all the way up to the end, and he said it is finished. And after that, he said, Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. He knew he was ready. He was offered up on that cross. He was offered up on that cross. And you know how I know he gave God his best? Is because today I'm saved. Yes. I've been washed in the blood of the Lamb. But had he not given God his best, yes. none of us would be saved today. I'm so glad he gave God his best. And because he gave God his best, and because God gave his best for us, yes. I want to give my best to him. Yes. And he has specific requirements just like he did in the Old Testament. And I know we're not under the law anymore, but I do know when we get to the New Testament, it tells you and I that we become the sacrifice. Yes. So if you're going to give it to God, you make sure it's your best. Amen. I mean your best. And it need to be an everyday best sacrifice. And when you find yourself falling short, Bring yourself back up again. Get yourself together. Ask God to help you. Because you know when you are falling short. Yes. Tell God I want to give you my best. Somebody put it in the chat. Say, God, I want to give you my best. I want to give you my best. I want to give you my best. And mean it now. Don't put it in there if you don't mean it. Because God knows whether you're telling a lie. Don't even say it. That's okay. You don't have to say nothing if you don't mean it. I want to give you my best. That is my heart's desire. Yes, yes. Now I didn't make you say I'm going to give you my best. Because um, I'm going to put you in another place with that. Uh -huh. I ain't trying to take you there. I'm going to leave that with you and God. But I want to give you my best. And if you want to give him your best, he's going to help you to give him your best. Yes. So that's the thing I love about the Lord. Because without him, we really couldn't. We couldn't. That's why he gave us a helper. That's why he gave us the Holy Spirit. And if you don't have it, you can get it today. Because without him, you will never be able to give God your best. Yes. You got to get him on the inside. You got to let them do a transformation on the inside of you. I want to give God my best. Time is winding up. It's not, it's not, it's not, it's, it's not getting shorter. I mean, it's not getting longer. It's getting shorter. Yeah. It's winding up. It doesn't matter how old you are. Okay, young people dying. A whole lot of young people dying. Probably more than the old guy. I said that before. Now, more young people are dying. More young people are getting killed. Burn a whole lot of young people these days. That's right. You don't know how much time you have left. Give God your best. Remember now thy creator in the days of thy youth. When the evil days draweth not nigh. All right? And then he began to go down the list. And he began to talk about the eyes and, you know, the window panes and all of that. You know, that's talking about the different parts of our bodies. Because after a while, as you get older and you get older... The body begins to kind of deteriorate. Whether you can't do things like you used to do. Mm -hmm. But why you have enough energy? Uh-huh. Why you have enough energy? Don't waste your enemy, your energy on the things of this world. On the things that the devil wants you to do. Alright? You got people say, yeah, you don't need to be doing that right now. Oh, just have yourself fun. Well, they're telling you just send yourself to hell. You too young for that. No, you're not. You young enough for it. Because you need to serve God while you're young. Yes. Give God the best days of your life. Yes. And I'm not saying the latter days can't be the better days. Because some people swandle, you know, their life. And so the better days is when you get with Jesus. But don't swander your life. Because you don't know how much more you got left. Yes. You don't know how good they're going to be. As you continue on in this life. Things have changed in this world. And they're constantly changing. For the worse. Okay. They're changing for the worse. And it's going to get a lot worse than what it has already been. What it is right now currently. Alright. 
So while you have the freedoms that you have, appreciate them, yes. acknowledge them, and give God the best. Do the best you can with everything that he give you. All right? And there's so much more. There's so much more of you that you have yet to experience about yourself that God wants to bring out of you. Okay? He wants to bring it out of you. There's so much that, that, that these packages house. This earthen package is housing a lot of good things that God has put on the inside of it. But you can't get it out until you get him in. It's never going to be revealed in its completion unless you get him in. Yes. And then when you get him in, he can start unwrapping and unraveling some things and exposing you to yourself. Because there's a better you on the inside of you, but only through Jesus. There's a better you on the inside of yourself, but only through Jesus. Give God your best. Our praise and worship team is good enough to come and give you Amen. And while they're coming, we're asking if you would go to your cash app, your give them five app, and just be a blessing. Be a blessing to the ministry. Be a blessing to the ministry. Amen. I try to give you my best song today for the Lord. Amen. Because that is what he so desires. I hope you received it. Amen. With a humble heart. And that God has given you a spirit of obedience to obey his word. There's no one that's under the sound of my voice that doesn't have room to grow. And if in your mind, and if the devil has told you that you've already arrived, then you are being fooled. Because there's always room for growth. Hallelujah. At this time, our praise and worship team. God loves a cheerful giver. Let's rejoice and give unto the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We thank God for the word. Hallelujah.